This is Twit. Prior to uh, Pelosa, where Matt and I, you know, work full time on the project now, we were both employed at a company called Umble, uh, which is a data management platform for sports and entertainment companies. So think like professional sports teams and big media companies. And these are companies that have tens, uh, maybe millions of fans in their databases and, and are collecting millions of data points about those fans. And a lot of the a lot of the queries that they're wanting to do on that data um, oftentimes revolves around segmentation of the data. So a lot of like the examples that you gave, um, you know, I want to narrow down to the females from California that like soccer and then, you know, perform some action on them or, or take that segment further and say, you know, what are the top. 10 movies within that segment that those people like things like that so so segmentation across um, high cardinality data sets was something that um, we were um, was really at the core of our platform um, and so that is is really where we came from at Umble, um, you know we started about five years ago and we built our early a version of the platform around Elasticsearch because it was really the only thing out there that kind of could kind of handle the the types of queries that we needed to do. Um, but as we grew, um, as we started onboarding more and more clients, and you know, seeing larger and larger data sets, uh, Elasticsearch just introduced problems that that you know, we needed to get around. First of all, it was, um, it got to be really expensive. You know, we had a 20 node Elasticsearch cluster with like several terabytes of memory just to, mm. to hold the amount of data for these sort of ad hoc queries. Um, it was, the ops team didn't like us very much. You know, if a node would go down in Elasticsearch, sometimes it was a little hard to, to administer. Um, and also, you know, it just was a little unpredictable for the types of queries that we needed. We were really pr uh, producing ad or supporting ad hoc queries in basically in real time. And th the things that we would notice was with Elasticsearch, especially on things like top end queries, um, is that one time you might run the query and it comes back in a few seconds, but you might run that same query later and it takes 30 seconds because for some reason, you know, had to pull from disk and, you know, the data it needed wasn't in memory. Um, so it's just that unpredictability um, caused us to need to look for another solution. Um, and so what we really did in this sort of introducing Pelosa's set out to um, implement a service that could answer the types of queries that were really causing us the most problems with Elasticsearch. And that was, again, these sort of really high cardinality um, segmentation, bitwise operation queries on massive data sets. Um, so that's that's a bit of background about Pelosa and where we came from. Cool. And so this isn't to completely replace <clears throat> the data stores that you would use with the data because, well, I mean, is this just for doing aggregation or are you also looking at maybe uh, give me all the uh, records that uh, meet this criterion? Does it is, does it do the individual rows as well? So, yeah, it does store, um, you can get back a, a, a good portion of the data that you need. Um, a lot of times, you know, you might narrow down your segment and then go back to your persistent data store for a little richer data set about, you know, that may in, in the use case of sports teams, you know, about their individual fans. Um, but at a high level, you can actually store a lot of relevant data and aggregate data in the index itself and not actually have to go hit the primary data store. And, and what's your responsibility at uh, Pelosa? What do you do? So I'm the I'm the head of engineering at Pelosa. Um, so I just, as chief architect, sort of make sure that um, our road we're on the roadmap and and we're building features that are going to be useful for for other people. Cool. And and uh, and and Matt, what's your responsibility? Uh, so I'm a lead engineer, um, and you know at, at a company this small, that basically means you know tackling whatever and whatever comes up and. Uh, 
be that you know doing podcasts or uh, implementing a new compression in our, our bitmap storage format. And then what's what has been some of the biggest challenges here? And, and was this is this competing with anything else in this space already other than say Elasticsearch? You know, I think one of the biggest challenges has been trying to figure out what we are competing with and you know <laughs> how do we how do we explain what we are to people? You know, Elasticsearch is a pretty easy comparison because they are an index. Um, and not you're not supposed to use Elasticsearch as your system of record, right? It's it's not tuned necessarily for extreme durability. Um, and so that idea that we've kind of been pushing of the first class index um, and separating the index from data storage uh, is is probably going to be one of our biggest hurdles, I think. Okay, and where, what's the status of the project? Is this already something that I can use? Oh, absolutely. Um, we have uh, what we hope is pretty thorough documentation, and if it's not, we hope we'll get a pull request. Um, but you can download it, run it on a single machine. Um, you can actually just download the binary. It's written in Go, uh, and it's it's very portable. Um, but uh, you can run it on a single machine on a cluster. It's open source. You know, it's been running in production at Humble for a few years now, uh, so it's fairly stable for that use case at the very least. And so uh, why go? Why go? That is an awesome question. Uh, I <laughs> sort of fell in love with go um, over the past couple of years. It is a fairly simple language in terms of uh, the features, the number of features it has. Uh, but all the features are sort of orthogonal in that they uh, they give you a full set of functionality that you need. It has great support for concurrency. Um, it compiles really fast, almost to the point where it feels like a scripting language, uh, and it performs really fast. And so it really allows us to use all of the hardware available, you know, whether that's uh, a single core, multi-cores, multi-machines. Um, Go kind of makes it easy. It, it's a very pragmatic language, and it, it makes it easy to build uh, large, uh, stable software. So uh, where exactly are you are you storing the uh, index you're working with uh, when you after you generate this is that going to get stored on the disk is it going to be on your servers uh, where is it going to be Yeah so it's it's in memory mapped files actually uh, most of our operations come out of memory for speed um, and then they're they're mapped to disk generally in SSD for durability uh, so if a node goes down we can bring it back up without too much trouble. There's also uh, node to node replication, which is configurable uh, so that if you truly lose a whole node, uh, you can not have to rebuild your whole index. So you, okay, so it's memory uh, memory mapped, you mentioned. You can have this on multiple, uh, multiple servers, so you are sharing memory somehow? Uh, so, if it's on multiple servers, uh, we use a consistent hash to decide sort of where each uh, where each bitmap is or where each you know slice of a bitmap is. Uh, so the client can actually query the server uh, that the data is on if or you know some queries will have to go to every server and Pelosa sort of handles sharding out the query and uh, joining the data back together and uh, returning it to the client. 